It started early one morning. I woke up thinking there must be some positive aspects to the frightening COVID-19 pandemic. So I started making a list. The bad things were easy, but I had to think harder to come up with good things. I was reading and listening to stories about positive changes and resourceful, resilient people stepping up and helping each other. So I made a very preliminary little sketch. I started taking notes while watching the news. It was lifting my spirits to find all the things that people were doing to help one another. I typed up two pages for each category and then found a typeface that looked handwritten. I wanted to do a painting that expressed my conflicted feelings. Since we're all having to stay at home, I thought I'd make it personal and use myself as a general model. So I sat down in front of the mirror and started taking pictures of myself. And this one I felt expressed my feelings the best. And the light coming in from the window was pretty perfect. I knew I wanted to make a positive and a negative statement and that I would incorporate words somehow. I also wanted to start with a good drawing, so I selected an 18 by 16 piece of UART sanded pastel paper in 500 grit and sat down in front of my big computer monitor. I initially converted the photo to black and white so I could see the values more easily. Then I started drawing with a woodless graphite pencil. I intentionally centered my face to illustrate the concept of being divided and conflicted. I also wanted the eye to be my main center of interest. I liked that I could easily smear the graphite to give quick tonal variation. I wasn't concerned about lots of detail at this point, but I did want to achieve a sense of depth and the feeling of anguish. I work much more quickly on the shawl, as you can see. Still, just using the graphite pencil. I was enjoying making fast scribbling marks. This is where I left it until the end of the day. I posted it to Facebook saying I'd be adding color, but everyone said I should leave it as it is. I was a little torn. I thought about leaving it since I did like the energy, but I really had more plans for this one and didn't want to have to redraw it. So the next day, I took a chamois cloth to soften the marks in the shawl. Even though I had liked the energy, they were distracting me from my main intention for this piece. In addition to blending, I also used a kneaded eraser to lift out some of the highlights. I wanted to keep those areas clean for when the color was added. Once I was pretty happy with the values in the drawing, I sprayed it with Lusso Fixative so my colors wouldn't get contaminated by the dark graphite. This also helped to set or stain it into the paper. Next, I added my darks with Dr. Martin's watercolor dye in Payne's Gray. I diluted some of it with water so it had transparency, and I brushed it on the right side of the background in the shawl, getting some nice watercolor-like washes. I also used a gold liquid pearlescent liquid acrylic on the left side of the background and on the flesh tones. The drama I'd been looking for was just starting to emerge. Ooh, then I took a deep breath and took out my Brusho Crystal watercolors. They can be very unpredictable, but I wanted to take a chance. First, I sprayed the area with water, then sprinkled some powdered pigment onto the paper. It started to blend and bleed, but it was too gritty looking, so I sprayed it again to diffuse the crystals. I also added some dark blue and purple crystals to the dark areas so they wouldn't look flat and lifeless. I decided to add color to the black and white striped shirt I'd been wearing. I took out some yellow ochre liquid watercolor and brushed it all over the shirt. The transparency allowed me to see the stripes, and since I had used fixative, it didn't bleed. I was having a problem still with some shiny reflections on the face. This was from the iridescent liquid acrylic. In certain areas, it just looked terrible. I was frustrated and just left for a long coffee break. 
I had hoped that once I added the soft pastel, its opacity would cover the areas that did not, that I didn't want to look shiny or glittery. In some lights, it did look okay, but in others, it was still looking terrible. I kept on. I started with pastel pencils since I wanted some detail in the eye. I knew I didn't want an overlooked, fuzzy appearance, so I got out my bigger pastel sticks and started making bolder marks. Since I was still struggling with the iridescent reflections, I decided to brush the chamois cloth on top of my pastel stick to coat it with a lot of pigment. This way, I could really press and rub the pastel paint into the surface. Finally, it was working, so I added it all over the flesh tones. With my new confidence, I decided to make the stripes red and brighten the yellow in the shirt. I exaggerated the perspective on the stripes a bit to further increase the drama. I like the way the composition of the shirt pattern and colors brought you up and into the face, keeping the left side mostly bright. Time to take a break. It was the end of day two and time to step back to reevaluate. This is my usually messy studio. I took a photo at this stage and flopped the image. Seeing the mirror image helped me to see some problems. I wrote down my reactions on the printout. I wrote forehead too flat, dark in hand, dark in shadows under nose, lower lip and chin, thick neck and make it look more rounded. Okay, I really couldn't leave it alone. So that night, still that night, after addressing my notes, I decided to start adding the words. I took a big piece of tracing paper and covered up all the skin tones so I wouldn't smudge it. I printed out the words and used graphite transfer paper to transfer the written messages onto the artwork. Late at night, I finally did leave it alone. I knew I wasn't completely happy, but I needed distance. The next morning, I made a new plan. I realized that the entire dark side now looked flat and the dark was overpowering the light. I also changed my mind about the intensity of the shirt color and I softened its edges. And I still had to make the shadow side of the hand darker. To balance it out, I darkened the words on the left with a blue pastel pencil. Then I thought that I would like some of the messages to pop more, so I added red in those areas. I decided to highlight the most important messages on the dark side with yellow. And I scribbled over some of the words with pastel pencils to reestablish some of the original loose marks and color that had been in the hair and shawl. Is it ever really finished? I just know it needs to sit now. This painting has been therapeutic for me. As someone who previously rarely listened to the news, I now feel current and connected. Do you think you can feel confident that things will work out? and at the same time feel afraid about the future. Yeah, you can, I, I, I do. I hope you've enjoyed watching the development of Portrait of COVID-19. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.